in this new Packard Bell computer. And with a 1.2 gig hard drive, 16 megs of memory, and Windows 95, this is a computer on the cutting edge. Good morning, friends. Today, I'm getting down to a project I've wanted to do for a while. About two months ago, I did a quick video on this Packard Bell XL 2420. It was one of my scrapyard finds, and it is from 1995. Has a Pentium 75 megahertz processor, a one gig hard drive, 16 megs of RAM. It does have a fax modem, crystal sound card, and it does have built-in Cirrus Logic video on the motherboard. And I'm going to reformat this computer, install DOS 622, and then I'm going to install all the updates for Windows 95 on it also. Do a clean install. I'm going to benchmark the onboard video in DOS. Going to do some Quake benchmarking and perhaps a DOS video benchmark. Additionally, I'm going to have fun with some video cards. Now these are some older video cards. Some of them are known as graphics decelerator cards, if you will. I'm going to use period correct PCI edition sound cards and do additional benchmarking on top of the integrated graphics. So we're going to take one S3 Trio 64V2 slash DX. It's a 775 model. I believe this has two megs of RAM on it. And this card specifically is from 1996. I'm also going to do a Diamond Multimedia S3 Verge card. And it's specifically the Diamond Stealth 3D2000. And this is from 1996. I'm also going to do a Matrox video card from 1996. I forget the exact model of this one. I'll have it in the video description. And then we're going to do one more Matrox card from 1997. Again, I'll have the description in the video description. Now with these cards, they all come with individual driver sets. Uh, for Windows, for DOS, I'm going to actually just use the bare hardware in the DOS benchmarking. And then later on, we'll see if there's any specific DOS drivers that get the video cards any additional oomph, so to speak. But right now, what I'll do is I'll open this computer up. We'll take a look at the guts one more time. And then I will reformat it, install DOS, Windows 95, all the updates, and then we'll get down to some benchmarking fun. As on the previous video, I'll do a quick demonstration of the inside of this bad boy. And we have an interior riser card that contains two additional PCI slots and two additional ISA slots and then a third that's Occupy our fax modem sound card. We do have a Pentium 75. And then we do have two sticks of 8 megabytes of RAM. We have the floppy drive. We have a quad CD-ROM drive. And we have a 1 gig hard drive. And the power supply is working very well. I was actually very surprised at the condition of this scrapyard find. Because I literally pulled it out of the dumpster, as I showed in another previous video. So with that all being said, I'll probably just uh, get some of the dust out of the interior and go ahead and reformat, install. I'll speed all that up for the audience. And then we'll get down to some video card benchmarking. Here's a quick look at the boot screen and the BIOS for this Packard Bell computer. Recognize the hard drive, CD-ROM drive, go into the BIOS. The BIOS is very basic. Now, there's not much we can change in here. Uh, we can't change any of the processor settings. I couldn't change any of the memory timing settings. I could enable, disable uh, IRQs and peripherals. But aside from that, um, 
just not much you can do with it. And the BIOS itself did not allow the onboard video to be enabled or disabled. We could change the boot sequence, turbo on. I haven't tried booting uh, without turbo on, so I wonder how much that slows it down by. And then there's a couple of settings I'm just not 100% familiar with, but again, just not much we can do with it. Here's an interesting thing that happened. As I was trying to delete the existing DOS partition, it turns out that Packard Bell, and probably Packard Bell when they first installed the hard drive, labeled it volume capital A small f. Well, you can't type a small f at the DOS prompt in MS-DOS. And I could not for the life of me delete this partition. So I went back on the uh, big old World Wide Web and discovered that if I downloaded Delpart, that's delpart.exe, uh, it's part of the Microsoft Enhanced Tools for Windows for Workgroups. I was able to actually delete this partition at the C prompt after I rebooted with a DOS boot disk. So you see me here just trying desperately a couple of times to do something that I was unable to do with F disk. So Delpart is the program you need. It is out there on the web. Uh, just in case this comes up.
After benchmarking, I've posted the results here. Uh, one conclusion I can come to is that it appears that on a Pentium 75, we are somewhat CPU bound as far as several of these cards with the DOS benchmarks. That could be different in actual gameplay, for instance, or under Windows 95, which we will check later on. So for instance, we have the two Matrox cards and the S3 Verge card pretty much all topping out Quake around 18.5, 18.6 frames per second. Uh, Chris's 3D Bench and 3D Benchmark both are maximized on these cards. The uh, S3 Trio 64 card scored decently in Quake compared to the other cards and appears to have maxed out the other DOS benchmarks. The onboard Cirrus Logic is a little bit different though. Here we can see that where it had about a half a frame per second more than the Trio 64 in Quake, it scored significantly enough lower in the other 3D DOS marks that I think we can come to the conclusion that Cirrus Logic onboard video is probably not the way to go. There might also be some issues with the amount of memory available to these cards as the Millennium, the Mystique, and the Verge card all have at least four megabytes of RAM. And the onboard video with the Cirrus Logic looks like it's got two megs. And then we've got the Trio 64, which looks like it has two megs soldered on the card. So I think next time we'll see if we can benchmark these cards again under some perhaps Windows 95 games or Windows 95 marks. And then also with some higher clock CPUs, just to see if that's where the bottleneck is. I'm going to close out the video with a brief mention of the issues I had with the Packard Bell computer, in that I had to uh, exchange a CD-ROM drive, and I had to dig around until I guessed which pins to short in order to disable the onboard video. There is literally nothing on the internet regarding this computer as far as a manual or any of the motherboard pin settings. As sort of a wrap up, I thought I would show everyone what I wound up having to do to conduct all these benchmarks. First off, the quad CD that came with the XL system, I do believe that it has a failing drive belt. They have the little rubber bands in there and it just wouldn't stay spun up. So. I did swap it out with an old quad speed generic CD-ROM drive that I had an old light on CD drive. So I managed to finish the benchmarking test with that. Additionally, I had to take out the video cards to make room for me to get into here and figure out through trial and error that these jumpers right back here needed to be switched to shut off the onboard VGA and allow the PCI cards to function properly. So I was unable to find any manual for this motherboard anywhere on the net. And through a little bit of luck guessing and trial and error, I did manage to do that.